All right. Why progressive itemization is important in classic WoW. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Tips, and I'm back with some more Asmongold stream content for you. <laughs> Run off the fucking bat, dude. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Thanks, Tips. Really appreciate it, man. If you guys remember a couple of days back in my original Classic WoW Leaks video, I specifically mentioned the importance of progressive itemization in Classic WoW, and I noted that based on what we were seeing in the Classic WoW demo, progressive itemization did not appear to be in the game at that time. Now, it's totally like possible that Blizzard simply may have not okay. gotten to updating the items yet, and that is why they are in their current 112 state. But seeing as a lot of you guys left comments asking me why progressive itemization was so important to begin with, I figured I would make this video today because it is an incredibly important subject, a subject that will clearly dictate the future and success of Classic WoW. wow. So without further ado, okay. here is why progressive itemization is important in Classic World of Warcraft. Now, some of you guys might be sitting down right now, scratching your heads like WTF is progressive itemization. If I were to put it bluntly in a simple sentence, I would say that progressive itemization is the replication of the original vanilla World of Warcraft patch cycle with regards to item stats, attributes, and rollout. Essentially okay. what this means is that items would be released and or changed as they were back like in stats vanilla. Would change now, again, for a lot of you guys okay. didn't play back in the day or don't really know too much about vanilla WoW, some of the items that were made available at the game's launch changed over time. Some of them had stats changed, some items were completely overhauled, and some items were just added to pre-existing boss loot tables. These items were changed and or added to serve as a catch-up mechanic for a lot of the players that were coming in at like AQ patch and beyond that wanted okay. to catch up and actually play current content. They were never intended to be in the game at the start of Vanilla WoW. But let me give you some specific okay. examples because I know this topic is a little bit difficult to understand without knowing exactly what we're talking about. So I'll start off with this item right here, Spirit of Aquamentos. Now, as you guys can see here, that. Spirit of Aquamentos was a ago. held and offhand item that decreased mana cost by 25, meaning that this okay. item was probably intended for healers, although it was a quest reward in the Lincoln's quest chain. Really cool quest chain, by the way, that it's I might do a video Moonkins. on pretty soon. Is but out of mana? after four months in patch 1.3, Spirit of Aquamentos changed to have the following stats. Increases damage and healing done by magical spells and effects, by up to 20. Here's another example That's of good. an item changing over time, okay. and that is the Shadowcraft Boots. Now, Very as you guys crafty. can see here, Shadowcraft Boots originally had 21 agility and nine stamina on That's them in Vanilla World of Warcraft. Or did they? They used to have 21 intellect on them. And uh, a little bit strange, I'm sure a lot of you guys associate what? Shadowcraft Boots to rogues or the rogue dungeon set, yes. um, which is technically true, although the dungeon sets back in the day weren't necessarily class specific. But as you guys can see, Going from 21 intellect to 21 agility changes things drastically. And this Obviously, change actually yeah. makes Shadowcraft Boots one of the better items to get in PvP. It's not necessarily pre-raid bis. It's not the best PvP boots to have in vanilla, but it is one of the better items after this change. 21 and again, it seems like trivializes a lot. a lot of the progression leading up to this item. Next up, we have Diana's Pearl Necklace, which was actually added in patch 1.10. Okay. Taking a look at the stats right now, guys, plus eight stamina, plus eight intellect. Spell hit, which was incredibly rare in early vanilla WoW. <laughs> and of course, necklace. increases damage and healing <laughs> done by magical spells and effects by up to nine, essentially nine spell power. Fucking this is an incredibly blizzard, powerful item, guys. Okay. It's so powerful, as a matter of fact, that it invalidates Choker of the Fire Lord, which is the neck piece that drops off of Ragnaros in Molten wow. Core. And guess what? Diana's Pearl Necklace, it doesn't drop off of a raid boss. It drops off of the Cannon Master in Stratholme. It didn't drop off of him in patch 1.1, okay. but it did in patch 1.10. And patch 1.10 in particular, guys, is one of the biggest culprits for itemization changes in vanilla WoW. A lot of items that did not exist in the game previously were okay. added in 110 and retrofitted on the loot tables of pre-existing bosses, which is one of the reasons why this is so devastating. That makes we sense. have to skip a lot of the early raid bosses in vanilla WoW if these items are added into the game because a lot of these items drop off of regular dungeon bosses. And not every added okay. item was a drop. Some That's of them were true. crafted, as that you is can very see true. here, with these titanic leggings, which were added in patch 1.10. I used to want Look those, at those man. stats, guys. Absolutely those incredible. 2% hit chance, 1% crit, shit. and a staunch 30 strength on leg plates. Compare that to the Marshall's 
played leg guards, which are the rank 12 leggings for warriors. And as you guys can see, I used to have those. these two items basically have the same stats. Obviously, you have 2% crit on the leggards yep. versus the 2% hit on the titanic leggings. But, not but overall, these stats are pretty much identical. And if titanic leggings are in classic WoW at the start, all of a sudden, warriors have no incentive to rank except the rank 14 PVP weapons, which is essentially a three month, 14 hour a day grind. A lot of people aren't gonna do that crazy of a grind just for weapons. Again, just another yeah. example of how a lack of progressive itemization can completely destroy the progression curve. Here's another good okay. one, the Spellweaver's Turban, Turban, which has 36 spell power, nine intellect, an additional hit chance by 1%, which again is very, very rare for spell gear in Vanilla WoW. This was added in patch 1.10 and is basically better than every cloth headpiece in the game up until Nefarian, but it drops off of Dracosath in UBRS. Seems like Another item that was added in a later patch to okay. a pre-existing boss's loot table and subsequently invalidates almost all of the other content in the game okay. up until Nefarian. I don't think I need to tell you why this is awful for the game. And even beyond regular dungeon gear, that we makes also sense, have actually. reputation gear yeah. and reputation items, such as the recipe for transmute elemental fire that was introduced for the Thorian Brotherhood rep. Now, the reason why this is so controversial is that it essentially removes players from the world. Elemental fire is something that's used a lot in Vanilla World of Warcraft to craft okay. greater fire resistance potions. If you're able to transmute elemental fires, all of a sudden you don't have to go out to Arathi and farm them off of burning exiles. You don't have to go kill fire elementals in the Charred Veil. You don't have to do anything so out in the gameplay. world because you can just loot Heart of Fires from raids and then use those to transmute into elemental fires. And all of a sudden, you're doing exactly what World of Warcraft has done for so many years. You're taking the world out of World of Warcraft and you're pigeonholing That's people into farming mats in dungeons, which is something that Vanilla WoW was not about at all. And this is something that happened yeah. in a much, much later patch. It did not exist in the start of Vanilla WoW and it should not exist in the start of Classic WoW. And finally, what's we'll arguably the biggest offender of the progressive okay. itemization change. Here is the original Champion's Plate Head Guard, which is part of the blue PvP set in vanilla. Look at the stats on it. Plus 31 stamina, plus 9 strength, plus 8 agility. Clearly not a DPS piece. Clearly meant for PvP. But in patch 1.11 it was changed dramatically. It was upgraded dramatically. It now has a 1% crit chance That's increase actually good. and a 1% hit chance increase on top of having a lot like more strength and Holy albeit shit. a little bit less stamina. Like it goes from being Never a mind. strictly PvP piece to being one of the best PvE pieces in the game. And not only did the okay. stats change, but the set bonuses changed too. Wow. It went from having a two set piece of increasing chance to parry to plus 40 attack power. That's big. That's crazy. And some caster classes, too. I think it's mages in particular, their two set bonus for their blue PVP set is like one of the best two set bonuses in the game until max, which is a year and a half after launch. Completely invalidates next to all PVE content in lieu of farming ranks eight to 10 in vanilla WoW. Here is Grand Marshal's long sword, which is Ooh. obviously the rank 14 weapon for I always wanted players. to have this. It's a one handed sword. It has 2.9 speed. 49.7 DPS oh, just a increases screenshot. your chance to crit by 1% and 12 attack power. Yeah. But as of patch 1.11, it now has 59.5 DPS, 28 attack power, and is officially the best in-slot item for PvE Fury Warriors all the way up until Nax. I think progressive itemization might be a good idea. At the end of the day, these items were introduced or changed as a catch-up mechanic. Therefore, they should not be in Classic WoW at launch. It would be absolutely destructive to Classic WoW's longevity. So after we've gone through these examples, why is progressive itemization important? Well, first and foremost, it preserves content difficulty. Obviously, if Next you have slide. an item that's 30% stronger than any item in the game, and you're okay. using it at a time that it was never meant to be used, it is going to invalidate a lot of content. But that's not the you crux can make an of the progressive itemization yeah. argument. That's not what the argument is based off of. Because at the end of the day, content like Molten Core is not that difficult to begin with, albeit I think it's a lot harder than some people realize or some people expect it to be. The real reason why progressive itemization is so important is that it keeps current content relevant and it does not trivialize raids. One thing I've heard Asmongold say a couple of times oh. is that the problem with World of Warcraft today is that you're playing the patch, you're not playing the game. 
When That's you take true. away progressive itemization, you're basically doing the same thing. You're no longer playing World of Warcraft. You're only playing a specific patch because the gear that you're getting from basic dungeon bosses is so much better than the gear that drops off of Molten Core and Blackwing Lair that all of a sudden the only relevant content in the game for you is AQ and Nax. And that is a huge problem yeah. because AQ40 and Nax Ramus are only two of the seven raids in World of Warcraft. Why on earth would you take five raids out of the equation and take away that progression from World of Warcraft? I have no freaking idea. And that is why progressive itemization is very, very key. On top of that, it keeps world content relevant. Remember how we talked about those Titanic leggings in patch 1.10? Okay. If you have those in the game, all of a sudden, you don't care about Devil Sword leggings. You don't care about going out in the world Seven and farming Devil Sword right. leather. You don't care about farming elemental fire out in the world anymore because you have your transmute recipe and all you need is heart of fires that drop from raids. Keep those items relevant. Keep progressive itemization in the game so people are more inclined to leave capital cities to seek out those items. And I'll call back to my progression video that I made last week. Progressive itemization in Classic WoW will help maintain a smooth end game progression curve and keep a player's progression <laughs> sequence linear. Ah. And we talked about how important that was in that other video. You guys can check it out after this one. I don't want to get into it too much. But at the end of the day, a solid, smooth, linear progression curve is very, very that important. That is very important. RPGs, He's right. And it should definitely exist in Classic WoW. But in conclusion, progressive itemization is incredibly important in Classic as it preserves content difficulty, maintains a smooth end game progression sequence, and allows the game to be experienced as it was back in 2004 to 2006. But guys, at the end of the day, I'm just one lonely yeah. neckbeard out here. What do you guys think about all this? I wanna hear your opinions on progressive itemization in Classic WoW. Let me know in the comments section below. I'd love to check out your opinions and I'll bring up the interesting ones on stream. I did last time. I think it's really, really fun to talk about this stuff. But thank you for watching the video, guys. And if you liked what you saw, sub it up and stick around because we got more coming. Do and for like more classic WoW see? content news and updates, you can follow me on the social media listed right there on the screen. But aside from that, have a wonderful day, fellas. See you guys on Twitch. And as always, tips out, baby. All right. Um... So, uh, I mean, he's completely right. There is no, uh, uh, yeah. there is no, there's no fucking debate. He's completely right. If these items are put into the game, they will ruin the progression. We need the old items, the ones with fucking agility and spirit on strength gear. That's what we fucking need, bro. It Trust me. It does seem like it's bad that you have a necklace like that that's better than something that you can get from Ragnaros. Okay, like, I mean, that does seem stupid. And what he's saying is that basically these items that were added later on in the game were meant to kind of allow people to not really have to spend as much time in Molten Core because they had other alternatives. So if these items were put in the game whenever the game came out, then it would make some content DOA dead on arrival so like an example of this is this necklace right here right so you get the necklace from strathlum it's level 56 then you don't have a reason to go kill ragnaros so the reason that you have is more diminished because there's a necklace that for some reason is even better than the one that you get from rag so like the progressive itemization i've always been i've always thought personally that i don't think blizzard is going to do this right um now is that a bad decision I'll be honest, I think this uh, this video has kind of made me change my mind on it because I didn't really, because I didn't play classic uh, or I don't play like private servers, right? And I don't understand like, you know, all the ins and outs about it, etc. I haven't seen these items just side by side and seen what a massive difference it is. And uh, she knows travel, I'll talk to, I don't know. Um, so like this turban right here, Better than any everything up to Nefarian, but drops off of Dracosath and UBRS. Uh, yeah, these are th these are actually really really fucking good. Um, so I don't know like really what to say about it, man. Like, do you think that Blizzard is gonna do it with progressive itemization though? Because that's like the big question. Like, is this even possible to expect to happen? Uh, I really prefer. Uh, Go ahead. I mean, isn't the patch coming out? They're coming out with 1.12. Yeah, it is 1.12. And these items were added in 1.10? Uh, yeah, they were, yeah, I think they were added, like, yeah, before 1.12.
Okay, so it's confirmed that we will get the new items and not the old. So there's no, uh, there's not even a point in reacting. So they just fucked up the classic just now. I don't yeah, really classic's think... fucked up. There's no point in playing. There's no fucking point at all. Uh, I mean, do you really, I mean, do you really think that, dude? Like... If these items come out... Yes. I think. It's only a few things, man. It's not like every single, like, class has, like, a full set of these items that invalidate all tier 2 gear. You know what happened? What? You... You lost your balls. You know why? When when Classic was first announced, okay. you were fucking no fucking changes. You were up here on stream every fucking day. No changes, boys! That's no right. changes! Can we That's get a right. hashtag? No changes in the chat! No changes! And then slowly but surely... Change of the graphics. I mean, it's it's. I mean, come I was on. completely against little that. What do you mean? Little, cha little change of the patch. I mean, come on. It's just that. It's, I never said. I, I never said this. The, I feel like I'm reading another Reddit post. Little change to the gear. It's just the updated gear. It's not a big deal. Stop. That's di that's completely different. And I I made that distinction whenever I originally talked about it. I said the changes that occurred within Classic WoW. Right within the life cycle of Classic WoW, from 2004 to 2006, were absolutely on the table to be discussed and how they would be rolled out. Anything that did not happen in Classic WoW, like Group Finder, Transmog, etc., was off the table to me. Do you remember that? Yeah, 